All right, so we're back again today with another bullet review. Today, for the bullet review, we're reviewing the 185 grain Nosler RDFs. Um, if you haven't seen over the last week and a half or so, I've been kind of teasing this bullet. Um, I've dropped a couple of videos, one shooting uh, a five shot group at 100 yards that grouped like 0.22 inch. And something I didn't even say in that video was before I shot that group, I actually had shot a three shot group as my tester to see if the load that I worked up was going to work. And that three shot group grouped like 0.13 inch. And so I shot that group and then it shot to the same point of impact as the five shot group that I shot in the video that you guys saw. So that is eight consecutive shots, all to the same point of impact, giving me a sub quarter, if you add all that together, that's like a sub quarter minute eight shot group. So unbelievably accurate load that I've got worked up with these and it just goes to the consistency um, of this bullet. Um, and I do believe that's got a lot to do with the consistency in Nosler's manufacturing process with this RDF. So let's get into the nuts and bolts of the RDF here. Obviously it's a 185 grain, seven millimeter dash 284 caliber bullet. Um, it is a, got an advertised ballistic coefficient of 0.719 G1 and a G7 advertised of 0.357. Um, something I will say, I was very impressed that Nosler has kind of taken the high road here. And this is out of all the bullets throughout the time I've been shooting long range and truing bullets. Out of all the bullets I've ever trued, this bullet was the closest factory advertised ballistic coefficient to my actual true results so i do believe nosler has stood on the the quality of the product that they've got here instead of having to extremely exaggerate their ballistic coefficient as a selling point they've stood on the quality of product that they have and have not given you a, a super exaggerated ballistic coefficient so i did true this bullet out to 1300 yards um, with waterline impacts all the way out and at 1300 yards my G7 or my G1 ballistic coefficient was a 0.675 so that is it's not not a super small gap but uh, from the 0.675 that I got to the 0.719 it's like a 0 0.046 interval in advertised to my true results and I also will say like I've said before that is the results that I got from my barrel on my 7 SOM. Um, the test rifle that they used may have gotten um, results that were higher than mine, and it may be exactly what they've got that they've posted. Um, now, my G7 true results were much closer to Nosler's than, like I said, anything that I've ever seen before. So I got a .346 G7 true result out to 1300 yards with compared to their 0.357 so a 0 0.011 difference in ballistic coefficient on the g7 so extremely impressed with that um, those are probably real life numbers that those people could use plug into their ballistic calculator if they didn't have true results and be very close so kudos to nosler for not just going way overboard and trying to exaggerate their ballistic coefficient just to sell more bullets. Um, I, I did a video not too long ago called uh, Balancing Velocity and Ballistic Coefficient. Um, nowadays, everybody thinks ballistic coefficient is king, but if you don't have velocity, um, ballistic coefficient doesn't mean a whole lot. So kudos to Nosler for being truthful in their advertising. I really, really like that about this. So this bullet has a sectional density of 0.328 and the overall length is 1.54 inches and that is a very consistent overall length of these bullets. Uh, one thing I've been extremely impressed with these RDFs, um, I've got, I've been doing a couple loads with a couple of different types. Um, one thing that I've been really impressed with, especially with the, with the 7mm 185s, um, is the fact that 
they have the my consist the consistency across every bullet in the box. So I've been getting extremely consistent um, weights, extremely consistent lengths, extremely consistent knee plats. I mean, just the consistency in the manufacturing, extremely consistent O jive measurements. So very consistent in, all across the board, especially like I said with the 185s. Um, I said I've been very impressed with with this bullet overall. Um, this bullet has a extremely long bearing surface. It's 185 seven millimeter 185 grain seven millimeter bullet. So compared to the 180 grain uh, ELDM that we did a, a review on last time, this has a significantly longer bearing surface. Obviously, it's a little heavier bullets. So they've got to add the weight somewhere, and it has what Nosler is calling their compound ogives and I'm assuming what compound means is okay there's two types of ogives you've got a secant ogive which is the more flattened angled sharp oh, sharply angled or not sharply but more flat ogive that just comes straight to a point and then there is a tangent ogive which is more the radius ogive um, Secant ogives tend to be very particular in how they're loaded. Um, they don't, you have to really, um, you really have to get everything set right with a ogive, with a secant ogive bullet to get it to work in most platforms, whereas a tangent, a tangent ogive that is more rounded um, will typically um, shoot very well across all platforms, but the tangent ogive has a lower ballistic coefficient. Um, so I think Nosler has went with this compound ogive, and this is all just my opinion, and I'm assuming that this is what they've done. They have went with this compound style ogive. So if you look at it, it is, it just has a very slight, I mean, I have very slight radius on it. It is not just a straight angled ogive. So it's got a fairly steep, um, sl very slightly tangent ogive, um, which I'm assuming is done to make it work across more types of rifles in more chambers than just a secant ogive. So very impressed with that and also if you look the ballistic coefficient on this uh, 185 ELD even though it's a heavier bullet than the 180 or the 185 RDF even though it's a heavier bullet than the 180 ELD that we did the last time you'll see that the the advertised and true BC is less than the 180 so a heavier bullet but has a, a lower ballistic coefficient and I think the reason for that is Nosler's went with this this compound ogive shape to make it more a more accurate bullet but at the sacrifice of a very small amount of ballistic coefficient which I have no problem with at all this is an extremely accurate load Something else I will say, or extremely accurate bullet. Something else I will say is that if you are not somebody who likes to, enjoys the process of making a bullet shoot to its fullest potential, the RDF may actually not be for you. Um, I did a lot of work, especially in my six millimeter Creedmoor, to get these Nosler RDFs to shoot to their full potential. And even when I thought I had it right the first time, I wasn't completely happy and actually went back to the drawing board to squeeze some more accuracy out of them. Um, and then once I figured out what these bullets liked and how what, what I needed to do to make the 105 in my six millimeter shoot to its potential, I used everything that I had learned to load up the 185 and my very first load with it turned out to be the load that you all saw, the five shot group, just an extremely accurate load. Um, so, it, but it did take quite a bit of trial and error and adjustments to really make the 105 shoot and then like I said once I figured out what I needed to do to make that shoot I took that process over to the 185s and it took off right away so another thing and probably my favorite thing about these Nosler RDFs um, is the way that Nosler has went about forming their me plat if you don't know me plat is the tip of the bullet so most of the 
low drag bullets, the your ELDs, extremely low drag, or your your Sierra uh, tipped match kings that that are a, a low drag bullet. Um, most of the companies that do that, um, other than Burger, a Burger does not do this. Burger does very similar to the RDS. Um, but Burger's tips are not as fine as the RDS. But Nosler has went, instead of throwing a plastic tip on it or leaving a very large hollow point, um, Nosler has taken the extra step, and I'm assuming, and I, I may be wrong about this, but what it looks like to me is this is a tipped bullet. If you don't know what bullet tipping is, bullet tipping is where you take, it's an extra step you can do in your reloading process to take something like uh, the 105, 105 grain Hornady um, match bullets that I typically shoot a lot in my six Creed more. They have a very open, very inconsistent tip. They have a tangent O drive and they shoot very well. I've never had any problem with those bullets. They're super consistent bullets, but the tip on them is very open, very large hollow point, and they the ballistic coefficient leaves a lot to be desired with those bullets. But you can take and buy a tipping die for a six millimeter and tip those bullets, which is a process that you put in your press, a die that you put in your press, run each bullet into it, and it will uniform the tip, give it a much smaller hollow point, um, point the bullet much sharper, and this looks to me like a tipped bullet. And if it's not, if they're not running it through a tipping die, um, they have a very, very good process to form a tip this small and this consistent. So something I am super excited about with this bullet, super happy with, is the Mi Plat. How well this bullet is, has, how nicely formed, how nicely formed the tip of these 185s are. Um, super consistent, like I said, and they've took the extra step to make this make the tip of this bullet actual part of the bullet instead of um, adding a plastic tip or something to get that extra ballistic coefficient out of it. So I really like that about these. Another thing is if you compare this to like the 180 ELD that we did the last time, the boat tail on it is about the exact same length, seems to be a very similar angle, so something proven. So all the way across, the shape of this bullet is just built for an as an accurate design and I really really like that about it. Online I've been seeing a lot of people discussing reloading these and I will honestly say I have been aware of the RDFs for a number of years, a couple of years now since they've been out, but I had kind of steered away from them because I had done a lot of reading on the RDFs and seen that uh, people were having trouble getting consistent groups out of them. Um, but then you also read in those same forums and discussions where the people that are getting what they call flyers, where a bullet will shoot you know three or four shots really good in a row and then throw a random shot way away from the group, um, a lot of people that were downing these bullets are the people that you see that are, are jumping these things crazy amounts. I've been seeing people talking about bullet jump anywhere between 100 and 150 thousandths of an inch. So if you don't know what bullet jump is, that's the distance from when the bullet starts to leave the case to where it meets the lands and grooves. So if you think about it, if a bullet is, you're, you have 0.15 inches between the time it leaves the, or the time it meets the lands and grooves, that's a lot of room for something to really go wrong. Everything, when I started to reload this, even after reading what other, other people were doing, everything in me said, do not try to jump these things anywhere near that type of distance. So I tested from all the way up against the lands and grooves, all the way out to 50 thousandths. And I found the sweet spot in the 105 RDF and the 185 to be right around between 25 and 30 thousandths of an inch. So, and I've not had any problem, obviously, if you've seen the groups that I've been, sh the shot that I shot, have not had any problem throwing flyers, jumping them at that type of distance. So I think a lot of the bad reputation that this bullet has gotten is 
from these online forums and a lot of the trouble that people are having with this bullet is from trying to follow other people's reloading what other people are doing with their loads and jumping them a exorbitant amount which is causing flyers um, obviously if you're shooting five shot group and four of them make that jump no problem but then you've got all that extra room in there and one of them bobbles just a little bit it's not going to start perfectly straight into the lands and grooves and obviously that bullet is not going to land in your group so i think that has a lot to do and this is just my personal opinion and my theory on it to do with the bad reputation that the rdf has gotten um now i also will say with that along with that if you are already loading an RDF and you are jumping at 120, 130 thousands or something like that and it is working for you and you're having no issues with it, don't change that. I mean, if something's working, obviously don't change it just because my opinion is that it doesn't need to be jumped that far. If it's working for you, there's no reason to change it. So I just wanted to add that in there that as I know a lot of people I've also read that are that are jumping them that types of distances that are saying that they're having no issues with it and if that's the case and you're doing you're having very good results and you're jumping at 130 thousandths of an inch stick with that obviously um, but in my personal opinion it just doesn't need that amount of jump so another thing is Nosler for the longest time has had a cult following for their hunting bullets um, Nosler has primarily for the longest time been known for very consistent very accurate hunting rounds hunting bullets um, and I think this RDF is their first for foray into the low drag match bullet type of offering um, and I think they've knocked it out of the park with this and like I said it, it they they do take some practice some work to get them to shoot I mean you may load it up and get right off the bat to get it to shoot great from the get-go but I had to work at it um, and had to really use a lot of a lot of trial and error to figure out exactly what these types of bullets like but the I think they like I said I think they've knocked it out of the park with their first offering in a low drag match style bullet. Nosler for the longest time has been, has had a cult following with their Nosler partitions or their Acubon lines. Um, a lot of a lot of hunters that hand load their own ammo, um, the hand load their own hunting rounds, will use a Nosler hunting bullet um, and swear by them. Um, as a matter of fact, the very first large deer, the very first big buck that I was super proud of that I ever killed with a rifle was killed with a Nosler uh, Acubond. So it's another bullet that I I really enjoy shooting. I really um, had good luck with it in hunting and they perform very well. And I think Nosler has taken a lot of what they've learned from producing accurate um consistent hunting bullets over the many many years that they've been around and transitioned that very well into a match bullet so another thing is the price on these the price of this of these rdfs is extremely reasonable now i have seen a very a very large spread in the the cost of these bullets so if you're looking to buy these these 185 grain RDFs, the product number is 53432. So you could go to pretty much any online uh, reloading store, and if they sell this bullet, punch that product number in in their search bar, and it should bring you up the box of 100 RDFs. Um, the cost of the bullet um, for per hundred I have seen range anywhere between 32 and 42 dollars per 100 bullets um, which is an extremely large spread um, in cost for these RDFs um, I've purchased I've been purchasing these for right around 33 dollars a box um, 
and have seen a few places around that price range. So if you're wanting to buy these, I recommend doing, doing some research and finding the place that has the best price also along with that, the best shipping price and all that. So don't just, if you see them for sale, I would not jump right on a $42 a box price because you can find them much cheaper than that and $32 a box or the low end of the, that price range is an extremely reasonable, probably one of the best prices I've ever seen for such high quality match bullets. Um, another thing is if you shoot a 28 Nosler, they, Nosler offers a factory load for the RDF, the, the exact, this 185 RDF, Nosler offers a factory loaded 185 RDF in the 28 Nosler. They have match 28 Nosler um, preloaded um, rounds. So if you're looking to buy some 28 Nosler preloaded with the RDF, um, you're going to look at a cost anywhere between, I've, I, from doing my research, between $52 and $72 per box of 20. And that sounds like a whole lot, and it really is. That's a lot for 20 loaded rounds. But I also will say that with that, you are getting, if you're a reloader, you are getting 20 pieces of Nosler brass, 28 Nosler brass. And if you look to buy 28 Nosler brass, you're looking at, for 25 pieces of brass, you're looking at around $60 for 25 pieces of brass. So if you take that into account with the $52 to $72 price point of the loaded rounds, you're really almost getting once fired Nosler brass for the same price as you are buying the brass itself. So I think that's a good way to look at it. So if you're a, a hand loader and you're looking at, uh, you want to you try this bullet out and you need some 28 Nosler brass, that may be a great way to buy a box of these, test it, and still have some high quality brass left over that's only once fired and still has a ton of life left in it. Nosler brass is, is coveted brass amongst reloaders. So that is my review on the 185 grain Nosler RDF. I know I did it out here in the rain today. My kids were uh, inside and every time I've ever tried to do a video inside at my reloading bench, it always ends up a mess because my kids get loud and it's almost impossible to keep them quiet. So we're doing it out here in the rain. This is my 185 grain Nosler RDF review. Um, if, I hope if you guys were thinking about loading this bullet, this give you something to think about if it deterred you from it. Um, I hope this gave you some good reasons to think about either wanting it or not wanting to load this bullet. Um, I said I am very happy with it. Um, I've laid forth all the reasons why I really like it and my opinions on what I think is the reason that sometimes it's gotten a bad rap. And I hope this was helpful for everybody. So I'll see you guys next time. I'm out. Thank you.